everyone, I'm Afwan Lentinka and I'm a junior in the college studying both psychology and philosophy. I'm going to talk to you about Karika Papaya today, commonly known as Papaya, from the very small family called Karakasi. First of all, just a brief introduction to the plant. Papaya is commonly consumed as fruit with great nutritional values. Although it originates from Central America, nowadays it's cultivated in almost all tropical and subtropical regions around the world. And different structures of papaya carry different functions due to their different chemical compositions. Such as papaya leaves are antioxidant, papaya roots and bark and um, fruits, I believe, are antimicrobial. Papaya roots um, are also good for our immune system. And uh, the unripe fruits of papaya have anti-fertility effects. As you can see in this map, all the countries I listed here where papaya is commonly grown is near the equator, so where uh, hot weather is the dominant climate. Papaya trees physically resemble palm trees, as you can see in that picture. And papaya flowers are unisexually theocyaceous, which means the female and male reproductive organs are found on separate flowers, not on the same ones. <coughs> papaya male flowers are fragrant and trimorphic, whereas uh, female flowers are larger, solitary, and they nurture the fruits. Papaya seeds are black and spicy and bitter. And the papaya latex is white, and it contains papain, which is an important chemical compound I will talk about later. Papaya have, has been used by people around the world for a very long time. In Thailand, for example, or in South Asia in general, papaya leaves over there are often steamed as vegetables and people may um, smash leaves to make medicinal drinks. This green papaya soup in China is very popular during summer, and you can see in the picture in the middle, papaya is scooped out to, use, to be used as the bottom of the plate. In India, the bitter and spicy seeds of papaya may sometimes substitute black pepper, so you have a sense of how pungent the smell of papaya seeds is. Central American Aborigines use um, papaya to treat some chronic disease, such as diabetes, cancer, and um, cardiovascular disease. African hospitals have been using unripe fruits of papaya to treat skin wounds and any type of GI distress. People in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam also use unripe fruits to treat eczema, psoriasis, and genital wounds. Uh, these are the jars where people match papaya leaves or fruits. As male contraceptives, papaya is used in Assam, the northern part of India. And on the female end, papaya is the equivalent of equivalence of um, birth control pills in East Malaysia. Um, more extremely, papaya may be used in abortion in India. In order to relieve respiratory and intestinal discomfort, Brazilians use papaya to treat bronchitis. And as Ayurvedic medicine dictates, papaya can also cure constipation, diabetes, uh, oh, sorry, diarrhea, and gonorrhea. Uh, papaya is also an antioxidant, and it, the seed juice treats bleeding piles in large liver and spleen. It also um, alleviate the pain of sore teeth. There are some very interesting non-medical uses, such as the fermentation and brewing of wine in Malaysia, and the tanning of textile in Indonesian factories. As I previously mentioned, different parts of papaya have different chemical structures, resulting in different functions. Papaya leaves first mostly consist of phenolics, such as flavanols. And the two major flavanols are camphorol and quercetin. They are both antioxidant and anti-cancer. Papaya seeds contain bitter alkaloids, which have, have a depressant effect on hearts. And I guess that's why it's beneficial 
uh, for patients with cardiovascular disease. Papaya latex is white and it contains proteolytic enzymes such as papain and chemopapain. This picture depicts the molecular structure of the antiprolytic enzyme called papain. It's good for our immune system, it kills parasites, it relieves dyspepsia, which means indigestion, and it also it's good for any type of skin trauma. Papaya roots contain a variety of compounds such as the potents, alkaloids, tannins, and glycosides, and phenols. So potents are antifungal. Um, some alkaloids may be stimulant to cause the muscle in uterus to contract, um, resulting in unwanted miscarriage. Tannins are astringent, so it can stop bleeding. There, um, in this slide, I listed a series of individual biological activities of papaya. There are a lot, so I'm trying to go, to go over them very quickly. Um, papaya work, uh, works against a few very common bacteria, such as the Zika subtilis, E. coli, and um, Staphylococcus aureus, etc. Enthelmintic means antiparasitic, and um, papaya restrains the growth of a parasite called um, H. contortus. Anti-amoebic means it cures amoebic dysentery. And in one study specifically, it works against E. hysterophilica. It's also anti-malarial, which is the property that uh, some people suggest should be commercialized. This graph over there shows the antifungal activity of papaya against Candida albicans. Basically, all these anti-something activity here all have a similar decreasing curve because papaya significantly inhibits the growth of um, harmful things, no matter it's bacteria, parasites, fungi, or amoeba. Papaya, like I said before, is antioxidant because it scavenges free radicals and repairs um, damage due to oxidation. It's good for our immune system because it spare, uh, stimulates cell growth and cell repair from damage. There are also numerous invisible activities as well. In rats, papaya seed extract, even in diabetic rats, it um, restrains the growth of a few common bacteria, as I mentioned before. It's also enzymatic on uh, infected mice. It may also induce abortion or mm -hmm. unwanted miscarriage or preterm delivery on female rats. As contraceptives, papaya can go both ways. So as a male contraceptive, uh, papaya root extracts inhibit the growth of sperm and it deactivate and immobilize sperm movement on um, male rats, male rabbits, and male lagoon monkeys. As female contraceptives, papaya, uh, the unripe, unripe fruits of papaya can cause morphological changes on the epithelium cells in female uterus um, on female rats. Right. Uh, morphological changes include things like the disorientation of cells or diminishing microvilli on the uterus wall, which make, makes it really difficult for um, embryos to attach to uterus wall. It, it also facilitates urination in rats. It's also antioxidant. It's also suggested to be uh, good for our liver. It reduces uh, hepatotoxicity, but the MOA is not known yet. The root extracts in organic solution um, are suggested to weaken muscles, and therefore it's hyper anti-hypertensive on dogs and rats. Papaya Latex accelerates the wound healing process. It also increases collagen synthesis, which is um, a very important process for this formation of new skin. There are very limited clinical studies found on papaya, but here are a few ones I, I, I was able to find. First, it basically prevents the tangling of hemoglobin protein in sickle cell patients. 
It also prevents the implantation of human embryos. As I previously mentioned, papaya is an excellent candidate to cure wounds mm -hmm. because it facilitates all three aspects of um, the wound healing process. First, it quickly get, gets rid of necrotic tissues. Secondly, it um, facilitates the formation of scars and it gets rid of scars really quickly. Sometimes it may help to reduce the odor of some chronic skin ulcers. As you can see in this picture, these are mashed papaya fruits and it's in preparation to be applied topically on the skin burns on this man. In terms of contraindications, we should be aware that ripe papaya fruits are not harmful to um, either the mother nor to the in, uh, embryo. However, pregnant women should be very cautious about consuming unripe fruits of papaya because the chemo papain and papain may induce very intense muscle contraction in uterus. So um, that may cause abortion. <coughs> Occasionally, it's been observed that the overdose of papaya seed may be cytotoxic. But again, the mechanism of action is unknown yet. Since papaya as a plant resource is easily accessible to people in developing countries, um, especially where the healthcare system are not very well established, so it's a very economic approach to cure skin wounds and for people in poverty. The, its richness in vitamins maintains good eyesight. It also relieves dyspepsia and indigestion, and it may also widen the scope of um, tolerance of certain proteins that we may not be able to digest before. There's a biological product from Japan called BioNormalizer. Here's a picture of it. It's made from green papaya, and it's advertised to be able to rejuvenate body and make people feel younger. In conclusion, we love papaya because it's nutritionally valuable, it's delicious, and it's also medically useful. Just imagine all those medical uses I talked about previously all come from this one single plant. Um, it may also serve as an alternative solution to um, fight off the monetary drug resistance, which is the biggest challenging challenge to the medical society today. And researchers have consistently replicated the findings, so it's, their findings are very reliable. I suggest future researchers to focus on the following potentials of papaya, because the clinical studies on human subjects are very limited, such as first control pills, or it may become the main ingredient in um, skin products. Again, it may supplement the uh, function of antibiotics. And we should also look into the anti-hypertensive properties because it may be a great message for patients with cardiovascular disease. And finally, we should also investigate its anti-cancer properties. Yeah, that's it.